finally i got all the parts necessary to have the oil seals replaced on my 2003 honda code the v6 engine hello everyone welcome to today's video so diving right in let's get the oil seals replaced with the eight bolts holding the flex plate on using a 17 millimeter 12 point socket i'm now taking them off completely as i'm showing so with the flex plate off, we can see a lot of dirt and grease and oily mess and nastiness over here. So I'll be doing some cleaning. That's the red mean seal, the seal that put us through all this work. I'll also be replacing the O-ring behind the cover right here. So checking the whole area out. Obviously cleaning is mandatory because there's way too much dirt over here. So moving ahead, checking out the flex plate, the backside is also covered with dirt and grease and I'll be cleaning everything like I earlier mentioned. So after cleaning for about 20 minutes, here's what we have. I think it looks clean enough. I also realized that the valley drained into this hole right here. Not sure if you can see right through. So I was able to clear that out as much as I could. I can see right through it now. It's not fully clean. Looking up top right here. I was able to clean the valley. But I think whatever collects on there is going to easily drain. So with this design, obviously if you have oil draining in there, probably from the power steering pump on the other side, you could confuse that for a rear main seal leaking. So just some information right there. So next I'm going to take off the 10 millimeter bolts all around the housing and then pry it off so that we can prepare to get the rear main seal replaced including an o-ring behind here. Let's get right into it. The 10 millimeter bolts went on there very tight so it didn't take much effort getting them out. With the bolts completely taken out, next I tried to pry off the cover. Unfortunately, I forgot the two bolts going through the oil pan into this cover right here. And don't make my mistake, please, so that I don't get to break your cover. I didn't notice until after a while, but fortunately, I didn't break the cover. Here I'm showing the location of those two bolts I just referred to. So after getting them off, the cover should come off very easily as you just be breaking free the seal created by the RTV silicone. Now lifting off the cover, here's what we have. Yeah, that's how it looks. Doesn't look so scary. That's the O-ring I was referring to that I'll also be replacing. That's the main reason why I took the cover off because the red main seal itself could be replaced without taking off that cover. So looking underneath, here's what we have. I would obviously be cleaning the underside of the cover a bit. I'm not gonna to touch the engine end because it's not so necessary, it won't affect anything. With the cover off, I took off the red main seal like I'm showing here. So we all the maintenance offices properly cleaned. Here's the cover right here, well prepared, including the bottom that's going to meet with the oil pan. It's all been properly cleaned, scraped. Here's the gasket I'll be making use of. It's a Fel Pro high quality rear main seal set for this 2300 cord. It comes with the rear main seal itself and the O ring that will be going on right here. So. Next, I'm going to apply some RTV silicone to just the cover, place on the o-ring right there, and then reassembly begins. Here's a view of the cover with the silicone applied to the maintenance offices. With the cover set back in place, I'm now going to wait about an hour before tucking down the eight bolts around the cover outside here and the two below to the recommended torque spec. 
So while I wait for an hour to elapse, I guess it's time to move on to the other end and start working on there. After about an hour, using a torque wrench, I tightened the 10 10 millimeter bolts to torque spec of about 9 foot pounds. Now onto the installation of the red main sail itself. I applied some engine oil to the inner lip of the sail and then pushed it on as far as I could using my fingers and then using the old red main sail. I gently tapped it into place like I'm showing here, being careful not to heat on the crankshaft. So I'll be installing the flex plate. In order to get the orientation of the flex plate right here, here it is. Obviously, looking on the other side, looking at the bolt marks, these indicate that the bolts that would attach this to the torque converter will be on this side and that has to face the engine side so that means the flex plate is going to go on this way so that the torque converter will be on this side so there is a there is a circle on the crankshaft here it has to align with this mark left by the washer that is supposed to be on here so I'm going to make sure that lines up so this particular hole is going to be above this right here. So putting that in place, yes, I think that's correct. That was probably done in order to prevent vibrations. Everything must have been balanced when the engine was being manufactured. So with that in place, I have my set of bolts right here. Also, this is the washer, and obviously we have all the bolts. So, if I take out these two bolts, we can see this hole right here. So we need to make sure it aligns with this dot, this mark left on the flex plate. So, we will put this on. So let me put you on time lapse while I get this fastened by hand. It cannot be overemphasized that one should always start off bolts by hand in order to prevent cross threading. Moving to the front of the engine. In order to take off or replace the cam seals and the front crankshaft seal was necessary to take off the covers, the engine bracket and also remove the timing belt. But before taking off the belt, it was necessary to set the timing marks like I'm doing here so that everything will pick back correctly. Now I'm taking off the timing belt tensioner, the two 10 millimeter bolts, so that the timing belt can be taken off. Next, taking off and exposing the crank seal below, two 10 millimeter nuts, and then taking off the crank seal bolt in order to get the washer off. I have to take off the crank position sensor before I could take the gear out. So I tried taking off the connector, but I noticed there wasn't going to be enough room. So I ended up taking out the 10 millimeter bolt to get the crank sensor off. With the crank sensor out of the way, I was able to slide off the crankshaft sprocket. I also ensured that I didn't lose the small key. I kept it in a safe place because of its extreme importance. After some cleaning around the front crankshaft seal, here's what I got. Next, using a pick, here is showing how I got the crank sail removed. I snuck the pick under the sail and then when it was on there properly, I pulled as hard as I could and gently walked the sail out like I'm showing. Yeah, that was it. So that was how I got it out. In installing the new sail, I followed the procedure that I used earlier on for the rear main sail and got it fully seated in flat and flush. After the seal was installed, I returned the crank sensor and the gear back to their proper positions. For the camshaft seals, I had to use my impact wrench to get the cam sprockets off. And then once that was off, I followed the same procedure and restored the two seals. Like I'm showing here, everything went on real smooth. 
and I don't foresee any leaks at all. Everything went good. So it's a new day here. Work is still ongoing on the engine for the 2300 Eco V6. I got all the oil seals replaced already. That's the camshaft seals on both sides. The crank seal up front here. And also the rear main seal, including the oil seal up top around here behind the flex plate. So with all that done, the engine is almost ready to go back into the vehicle. While taking apart the timing components earlier, I realized that someone had been here previously and the one of the tensioner bolts, this one right here, the shred on the block was stripped. So I'll be attempting to get it fixed right now using a helicoil. So wish me luck. This is the first time I'm making use of helicoil and I'm hoping all goes as planned and I don't damage anything. So let's get right into it. Well, I just got the helicoil installed. It took me about, I must say, probably 10 minutes. It was much easier than I expected. That's it right there. Looking good. Feels like having brand new treads in there. Compared to the lower hole, which is that one, the upper one looks brand new. So, I'm going to get the bolt right now and test it out. So, putting in the bolt right now feels, feels really solid. Going on smoothly. Wow. Um, I'm blown away. So I guess that's a fix right there. So right now I'm gonna depress the hydraulic tensioner, ready to install and then wrap this baby up and get it back in the car. So here's the timing belt tensioner, all compressed. I got this pin off an old tensioner I had because I realized that using an Allen key could be quite difficult to remove when it's time to pull the pin. So with this, I can easily grab onto this and get it out easily. So now I'm going to install the tensioner onto the engine. But first, before doing that, I found it easier putting the timing belt on before installing the tensioner or before bolting the tensioner onto the block. So I got this brand new Cloys belt. I've had good results with the brand in the past. So I'll put this on to replace the old belt that is on here. So the part number, it's a, it's a B329. This was me installing the new timing belt, obviously starting from the crankshaft sprocket and then going to the camshafts and trying to work it on there with minimal slack, especially when not on the tensioner side. With the timing belt fully installed and the tensioner right here, the two bolts tucked down to spec. The torque spec is about 9 foot pounds. I'm now going to pull the pin right here. Let's get it done together. At times it requires considerable effort. Use my right hand. Obviously, this end is loose so that the tensioner can do its job. So, this side is already tight. So, still trying to get the pin out. Come on. So right now I have the new timing belt fully installed. Tensioner assembly also tucked down and obviously the pin is out. Everything is set. 
I also turned the engine a couple of times and all the marks line up as you can see and yes so I think we're good to go everything looks good so I'm going to put the covers on and then prepare to have the engine put back in the vehicle with the timing covers installed and everything put back together I'll be cleaning the covers a little bit more so they can look more presentable obviously someone has been here before and hacked up a lot of things many of the timing cover bolts were missing lots of them so I'll, so I'll see if I can get replacements for those then also I need to do some more cleaning because everything is really dusty and covered in mud but all in all the cell replacement went good after doing some more cleaning the engine will be ready to go back into the vehicle so with that we'll come to the end of this video if you found it informative or if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave me a like if you're here to subscribe what are you waiting for just hit the subscribe button and then also hit the bell notification icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video I upload videos once every weekend although I'm working on having that change very soon to probably twice a week to my returning subscribers I want to say a big thank you for all your support a really huge thank you to every one of you so by the next video hope to have the engine installed into the car and then we'll go for the first start after the major oil seal replacement jobs so fellas Stay safe out there. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.